So next we have uh, Brother Obi Egbuna. He is going to take the mic now. I'm going to do a brief introduction okay. and then he will start his session. Time is it? How much time do we have? How much time do we have? Obi, you have a very long bio, but I'm going to uh, make it a little bit shorter so we can get right into the program. That, that is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Yes, thank you. So, um, this presentation is looking at the. I'm sorry, excuse me. Mm -hmm. So we have about an hour and 15 minutes just uh, to, to watch the time. Oh, yeah. So Obi Eguna Jr. was born in London, England on October 8th, 1969 and raised in Washington, D.C. He received You're muted. <laughs> Are you saying you can't hear me? Yeah, you were you were muted. I can hear you now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so in addition to Yeah. 
two of them. We just have one. Um, are we on? Bare barely. And this this uh, the screen is saying you're muted, but I could hear you as you sound very distant. So just let me know what you need me to do. Nana Fear, your audio is actually coming through Alan Philip Barku's uh, uh, screen. So your your audio is muted. Alan Philip Barku's uh, audio is on. Yes, the IT has asked me to say that they are going to protect my voice. But if that's not happening, it is. Can you hear me now? Can everybody in my line hear me now? You're fa you, you sound faded, but we can hear you. <coughs> now. Go ahead If I could make a suggestion to your IT people, whatever computer that you're on, you should have a mic plugged directly into that computer rather than using the microphone for the audience. So you should have two mics, one for the audience to project over your, the speakers there and one that's plugged directly into the computer if possible. Okay, um, I want it so I can begin now. Yes, please start. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, um, good morning, good morning, um, daughters and sons of Africa. How are you? Um, sis, um, sister Fia, Mama Fia, um, the videos I sent, um, what happens now? Do I share them or are they already slotted to be shared? How are we doing that? Because if they give me the capacity to share, I can do that. It's Yes, go ahead and share. They're, they're allowing you as a co-host to share your videos. Okay, cool. All right, let me, um, give me a second. Okay. Um, on behalf of um, the Zimbabwe Cuba Friendship Association, and on behalf of Mass Emphasis Children's History and Theater Company, I am thrilled and humbled and honored to be with you this morning. Um, we have Mama Thea challenged us and said, have something that represents youthful expression. So we not only have that in the form of video, but we have a young comrade coming to you right there from Ghana. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show a couple of these videos first to give you an idea of what we do, do with the young people and then we're going to have him talk about the legacy of Ajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, how it's received and digested by youth and children in Ghana today, and what, how he feels that process will take place moving into the future. So let me show these videos real quickly, and then we can hear from our young comrade out of the Nkrumah circle, Ahino too, just a minute. So let me start with the videos. Bear with me.
Have you started the videos? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I did. Hold on, just a minute. So, oh no. Yeah, I thought they could. They just a moment. Let me. Um. Oh. So. Oh, that's right. I have to put it on the share. Okay. That's all right. Thank you. Okay. Let me start it over. And hopefully everybody can hear it. Can everybody see it now? Yes, we can. Okay. We don't hear the sound. How? Let me see something. We, how do we get them to hear sound? Because I I'm sharing it from an app file, and when I share it, there is an option to share with audio from your sharing screen. On my on my share screen, let me go back. All it says is um. There is a thing just. There's a small checkbox down there to share audio out. Oh, hold on just a moment. Let me. When you. Oh, okay. Advanced sharing options. Yes. This one right here. Only oh, multiple. Only who can share? No, Do no, I no, check all? No. Oh, this one, all participants. Click on screen sharing. You see a checkbox that says shares audio. Uh, that's what I did. And it says one person can share at a time. Mutual participants can share simultaneously and advanced sharing that's, options. That's the wrong box. Oh, OK. Which, which box am I supposed to? Close that screen and click on the screen sharing. The screen that says share this one. Um, I guess so. Do you see any checkbox underneath that? It says no. I don't see a checkbox. It just says application. At the base of that, you should see a checkbox with audio options there. When I click over, it says one participant can share at a time. Mutual that is the participant. wrong option. Not that. Okay, there's no other option. When I click on it says, what do you want to share? And when I click on it says application, I have a Chromebook that I'm using. Is that the problem? Hello? Can you hear me? So Obi, when you hit on screen share, you should see your screen and all the files and no, what I was saying is I have a I have a Chromebook. Is that a fact? Okay, and then and then at the bottom of the screen there'll be two other boxes, share sound and optimize for video clip. That's what I'm saying. I have a I have a Chrome. I don't have a laptop. So maybe because all it's saying is what do you want to share? And it's not letting me. Um, and when you when it says share, you click in the middle of that share screen. You don't see boxes coming up no. like your screen. No, it just says, what do you want to share? And all it says is application. And then when I click on applications, it's then I click on here and then it goes right to it. But you all aren't able to hear it. OK, so. Okay, so just share the link to the video in the chat. We'll play that from here so you can talk about it. Can you put the links to your videos in the chat and we will show them from this side. Give us a few seconds, um, sorry.
Which one is the first one you want to show? The African children, mass emphasis. OB, is he there? OB, which video? Okay, this is Bruce Kwanzaa. Okay, let me look for that one. I'm gonna share my screen. Can you let go of yours, please? Can you stop sharing? Is this the one? Can you see my screen? Yeah. Is my screen showing? Yes. Okay. But you can't hear him though. Can't hear him. So where's the sound? Some of our people who speak the beautiful and rhythmic language of Kiswahili were referring to homeless children use the term Izuraji, which means in English roaming around. During the years, Kiswahili speaking nations were subjected to British colonialism. We developed a dialect called Shang which is a blend of indigenous Kiswahili and colonial English. When speaking about this group of our children, those who speak in that vernacular use the term shokora, which means children who live off the streets. The academic sector of society who have developed rather stuffy and snobbish Disposition towards these children. Refer to them as Watata Wa Mutani, which means street children. Unfortunately, the religious slash spiritual devout sector of the community who remind us on a daily basis that we are born sinners whose souls are vulnerable to double temptation, simply say Watata Wa Hizi, which means children of today. When they say we are disconnected, therefore we are a lost and hopeless generation. These dynamics of isolation have forced children into the corner. However, a few of them have reached the conclusion, therefore, that they're the only ones who can develop a long-term solution aimed at eradicating this problem. Okay. The courageous and visionary Chubuwata does ready to tackle his problem consists of eight young children who are between the ages of nine and thirteen. Their burning desire for a solution outweighs the pain and suffering which stems from a life like a basic necessity. In the ways of I'm sorry, I don't speak your native language. Speak English if you want my business. Good morning. Can you please try your shoes? Sure, but if you don't mind me asking, what are you doing on your so early shadow shoes? Shouldn't the two of you be in school? You have money for food, transportation, or school supplies. Captain is Pedro. Kuhai Kisha. Kaba Police Awaza. 
I don't need to be rude, but we have to hurry before the police come. Are you serious? Something needs to be done. Take my card. I am yours in India. Give me a call. Rice and as a muzaji are hackies, I was total kisha. Una hua haika. Smahani, can I buy this paper? Oh, if you are buying, we are selling. I have something to confess. I speak Kiswahili, so I understood what you just said. Don't think the president and government are sincere? That is not the point. He shouldn't speak about us. He should speak to us. Believe me when I tell him, you're hard to find. Angalea, Nirivia, Brashi, Nakusa Fisha, Gari. You shouldn't steal. That makes things worse worse. Kuba, Akufa. What do you mean, still a stop? You sound like an animal. Don't show you any kushi. How do we survive? Did you just act like that, you idiots? How do we survive? We come together and organize. Plain and simple. We organize like I like depends on it. Sharachi, wakoni karibu sawana yangu. Thanks for the backhanded compliment, which really means I'm better than you. Go the other way. Kwanini uswenge kwa luka yako, wewe na Kamaria. Kamaria and I have decided as an act of protest, we will not speak a word of Kiswahili until all Kiswahili speaking nations push all the Mother Africa to address the issue of homeless children on our continent and all over the world. The truth always makes sense. Can you please go somewhere else before I call the police? No more train for my store. Dukha Lako, Miko Kwaluga, Quinya Dile Du. Kumana Joka Ako Wenda Jila. Sike Liza, Na Uti, La Sibio Uta Sambi Liwa. To hell with it, let's go. At least we'll have food and a shelter. You put us in jail because of child colonialism ordered you to do that. I can't take this. Take us to jail. Do your bloody jewel, officer. As strange as it sounds, Shani and Chico want to jail is exactly what we needed. Here we are. Here in Najiri. Tuna weza, tukua toa, terzani. Kamari is correct. This is bigger than the two of them in jail. Kwanini to Najiri, King Zaria. Since you love Kiss Wahili so much, here's the plan. Let's call for a march on British and US embassies and all the Kiss Wahili speaking nations. And he was in our course of business school. They celebrate a holiday called Kwanzaa, which is influenced by all culture and language. We can appeal to them to join us in protest from the seven days of Kwanzaa. Let us go to work. Let us speak the language of resistance. I went and met that NGO. He gave me a laptop and a salary. He had no idea this would be used for a revolution. Kwanza ni sikuko. Kwanza 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 ni sikuko. Okay, um, you can you can go ahead and cut this video right here and then put on the one about Cuba. Africa. The other one we sent. Can you hear me? The the Cuban one is a few minutes and then we'll let um Ahin say a few words and then we'll do our presentation. Thank you. I got you. Give me a Okay. And the Cuban one is the one we'll show. We sent three. We'll just send the Cuban one.
First and foremost, our hearts go out to the families worldwide whose relatives have tragically succumbed to the deadly corona pandemic. We have heard all of the conspiracy theories. Every night, the news reinforces panic and anger. By the time they finish with all this doom and gloom, you would think that on this entire planet, no one cares. In case you're wondering, we're talking about none other than Cuba, a nation that gives an entirely different meaning to the red, white, and blue. The love and appreciation that Cuba has received worldwide for fighting the corona pandemic is well deserved. The truth is, this is nothing new. Go and look up the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, the Ebola outbreak in West Africa from 2014 to 2016, and the natural disasters in Haiti, to name a few. The tragedy is, there is only one nation that is too proud and arrogant to accept Cuba's help, the United States of America. A very crucial point that we cannot gloss over is that a significant portion of the nations that welcome the Cuban medical personnel do not agree with the political direction of their government and revolution. Meaning that Cuba is willing to treat people in other nations that have been hit by fifteen years ago offer to send a 1,500 member medical brigade to the Gulf region to deal with Hurricane Katrina. This time around, not only is the Trump administration ignoring Cuba's willingness to deploy a medical brigade to touch down on U.S. soil and treat patients with the deadly COVID-19 pandemic and send the medicine called interferon alpha 2b. Unfortunately, this ridiculous and hateful posture is falling on deaf ears. Italy welcomed Cuban medical personnel to fight COVID-19 and COVID-2 with open arms. The U.S. government rejects or ignores the fact that Cuban medical personnel are ready to join the fight to eradicate the corona pandemic on U.S. soil. For my generation, all that confirms that your content and disregard for poor people and all humanity is simply unfathomable. You have a member of France's parliament urging and pleading with his government to bring the Cuban medical personnel to France right now. You have 45 nations who have lined up courageously and demanded interfere in Alpha TV. The truth is, Cuba is willing to overlook 635 assassination attempts on the life of Comandante Fidel Castro. 635. The Bay of Pigs invasion in 1961. And last but not least, an illegal racist blockade aimed at crushing their economy and patriotic spirit. Well, that being said, what is the problem? Yeah, what is the problem? Are you angry that the medical brigade Cuba is willing to send to the U.S. in the blink of an eye is named after Henry Lees, a.k.a. Inventive, the little Englishman, the U.S. citizen that fought in the Cuban army for seven years? Because he was Caucasian, does that remind you too much of John Brown at the raids of Harper's Ferry? The bottom line is in the name of all the fallen victims who transitioned due to COVID-19 and COVID-2. We are going on record to make one simple statement. We are emphatically demanding that the Henry Reeves Medical Brigade be allowed to come to the United States immediately. This includes the FDA allowing interferon Alpha 2B to be sent to U.S. borders and given to all people in need, regardless of their economic situation. Before Dr. King was assassinated by the FBI and the CIA, he was organizing the Poor People's Campaign. What Cuba is doing for the world with their doctors is a continuation of that campaign. As African children, we are comfortable making this demand. You need to be comfortable when you hear it. Africa is our home and that will never change. So when we say Cuba is our home away from home, we hope we don't sound strange because we don't want African people to be confused this is something we must explain. In Cuba, we are fighting in a revolution that people are fighting to sustain. In Cuba, everyone has free healthcare and education. We don't understand why this isn't the goal of every single nation. When people hear the truth about Cuba, they say miracles never cease. We respond to them by saying, let's end exploitation and racism and bring about real world peace. We know we are in danger, but we have no fear. 
because our African ancestors fighting spirit makes us see things very clear. In Cuba, we are praised for our vision and bravery for how we overcame colonialism and slavery. Mother Africa is our home and that will never change. So when we say Cuba is our home away from home, we hope we don't sound strange. Nuestro hogar lejos de casa por el bien con el chino. La madre África es nuestro hogar y eso nunca cambiará. Así que cuando decimos que el Cuba es nuestro hogar lejos de casa, esperamos que no son extraños. ¿Por qué? Porque no queremos que los africanos se confundan. Esto es algo que debemos explicar. En Cuba somos parte de una revolución que todo el mundo está luchando para sostener. En Cuba todo el mundo tiene atención médica y educación gratuita. No entendemos por qué este no es el objetivo de cada nación. Cuando la gente oye la verdad sobre Cuba, dicen que los milagros no pasan. Respondemos diciéndoles que pongamos fin a la explotación y el racismo y luego que traigamos la paz al mundo real. Sabemos que estamos en peligro, pero no tenemos ningún miedo. Porque el espíritu de lucha de nuestros ancestros africanos nos hacen ver las cosas muy claras. Cuba es a menudo elogiada por su visión y valentía, debido a cómo vencimos el colonialismo y la esclavitud. La madre África es nuestro hogar y, y eso nunca cambiaba. Así que cuando decimos que Cuba es nuestro hogar lejos de casa, esperamos que nos suene extraño. Get out of Cuba's way. 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 Cuba's still willing to put all hands on deck in service like waiters, man, they ain't known for it. Sending their doctors like troops and indoctrinating our doctors, well, excuse me, intellectually inspired so we can get down to the truth. But what happened to it's all about the youth. If you think about it, we've been out of school for a few. But of course, that's on nobody's mind right now. We just in right now. Catching up on old folks for lost time right now. But you think it's smart to take a break in a time like now? <laughs> but let me get back on topic. See, isn't it interesting how Italy had the highest amount of cases, then soon after they requested Cuba's help for their patients. But now the U.S. numbers are higher than all. While the people who were in office waiting for trauma on call, Trump said we should save money and fired them all. I mean, what should we do? As a people, I mean, what can we do? Let's come together to support something that has already been in the works. Okay. Um, how much time do we have left, Sister Fia? Well, you have about 10 minutes. Okay, that's cool. All right, that's perfect. So, um, of course, since we're coming to you from Ghanaian soil, it's only fitting that we uh, give half of our time to um, a young Ghanaian comrade. So, um, Comrade Aheen will talk to you for the next five minutes, and then we will close in five minutes. That's all we need. Thank you. With all due, it's an honor to present our comrade Aheen Otu. Go ahead, Aheen. Wonderful. Right. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you, baby. Okay. All right. So happy to join you and happy to be with you on this section. Um, so the topic that I was supposed to uh, discuss on this panel relates to incrumism and... Can you need... turn on your video? Oh, is it off? Or your camera. Uh, yeah. In the front. Back. Okay. Uh, hello. Right. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Now we can right. hear and see you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's great. All right, so my name is Ahinotu, the General Secretary of the Informatic Circle, based in Ghana, Kasua. 
Um, and the topic I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking and making discussion on in this session is on uh, incremalism. And before I begin, I would like us to uh, understand that there's a determining power on ideology. When it comes to uh, ideology, it has very great impacts on the lives of people and how they behave in terms of their thinking and action. And that is one of the most important things that we, we have to remember as Africans in, in, in the struggle for African liberation and African unity. And so on this session on Cuba and in, 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 in the connection between incremalism as an ideology to, to, to the struggle of African people across the world and on the continent, we have to understand how important an African ideology is to the struggle. And those of us here in Ghana, when you talk of incremalism, by definition, you mean the name or term given to the consistent ideological policies followed and taught by Kwame Nkrumah. And these are contained in the speeches, in the theoretical writings, and stated ideas and principles. And you also mean that in, in order to be incremalistic, must be related to. Did we lose him? Yeah, I think he was having some trouble. He's still on, but um, we lost his video and everything altogether. And I really wanted- Did you say uh, you have someone else? No, um, I, I was about to go, but I, I really wanted people to hear that young brother. Okay, but, we can. Um, um, I can. I can proceed. We we've got about five minutes. Yeah, We're supposed okay. to start stop at one thirty, but we can uh, add five minutes because of these technical problems. So can we get him okay, back? Okay, there there quick? he is. He's back. Okay. All right. All right. So the point I was making regarding incremalism as an ideology, by definition, focuses on on scientific socialism and uh, intellectual tools for the African Revolution and the need for an ideology that will inf influence our education, our thinking and our action. And basically, the speciality about incremalism is the need to offer the African man and woman some better life within our lifetime. And so the, 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 the impact of incremalism on the continent, just like we want to talk about the impact of Cuba on the African continent, we see that with the, with, with the coming of coming Nkrumah back into the Gold Coast around 1947, it sparked a revolution for the overthrow of colonialism. That is the defeat of colonialism in Africa. And sub of the Sahara, it was through increased ideas, education, and impact that sparked the whole fight against colonialism for the first Black nation sub of the Sahara to, to emerge. And through those movements and collaborations, subsequent African states began to gain their independence. And so, that was the first impact that we feel from an incremalist ideology. And what makes it special is the fact that Kwame Nkrumah in his, in, his, in his thoughts, studies and you know, discussions saw the need for Africans to have independence of thought. Today, when we want to talk about ideas for our revolution, our liberation, we want to uh, you know, refer to foreign ideologies and foreign concepts on, on, on socialism, like Marxism or Leninism or any other kind of ideology and philosophy that is of European origin. And so that is a problem in our struggle today, the ability to identify independent African ideas that focus on steady on African problems and African society, and that offers solution in a whole. And so what makes incremalism special, and it is based on the, the kind of scholarly work Kwame Nkrumah have done, is based on the scientific basis for such work, and it's based on the, the, the level of impact incremalism have on the continent on, and on the struggle for African unity. And so, and I believe my, my time is, is quite limited, and so I'll, I'll cut a lot of the presentation and, and 
uh, go into uh, the impacts and the need for us as Africans and Pan-Africanists to focus on how to revive an African ideology to lead the African liberation movement. And so regarding Nkrumahism and the impact in Africa, through Kwame Nkrumah's work, a lot of African states began to gain their independence. There were material support for nations like Guinea, Angola, uh, Rhodesia, and, and South Africa towards African liberation, towards African liberation, and towards the defeat of colonialism. And this was a position that we, we saw that Cuba took with Ghana in those liberation struggles. And so it, it's a reflection of the type of ideas impacting the type of government policies in Africa among various African states. And currently we realize that a lot of African states do not have diplomatic relations with other African states. That is of concern and of urgency towards their needs and aspirations. And so contrary to what Nkrumah had, had, had projected and has presented as an example for African states, right after independence, he made it clear to the Ghanaian people and Africa that the independence of Ghana is meaningless unless it is linked up with the total liberation of the entire African continent. And that Africa belongs to all people of African descent. And so that drive towards unity, that drive to make sure that the business of other African people, wherever they are, is the business of the Ghanaian people, became an example that was supposed to be to, to lead the mentality towards liberation and, and the African nation and the African family. And so this ideology, once we are reducing the, we are under emphasizing the impact of an ideology towards the African liberation, we are making it difficult for our own people to relate to set of ideas that are former, that are direct, that inspires us towards African liberation and the Pan-African struggle. Because without a body of thoughts, then there'll be a lack of cohesion in terms of our thoughts. And then we tend to fall into any type of agenda policy that may not have you know, strict defined objectives and principles guiding our struggle. And that is what I would like to present to, to all of us, that there's a need for us to come to adopt Nkrumahism based on the level of impact it has had on the continent. And there's a need to at least identify an ideology of African descent, of independent African development, of scholarly works like that of Nkrumahism. And so just to, to leave it with everyone, there's a need for us to, to, to help our youth to identify the works of Kwame Nkrumah like consciences and philosophy and ideology for decolonization, class struggle in Africa, and, and a couple of others that Kwame Nkrumah had written, defining and explaining the, 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 the nature of imperialism and the war against imperialism in Africa. Thank you very much. Wow, that was great. You did a, a wonderful job summarizing and getting to the point imperialism was in, in Africa. <laughs> mm. So uh, we, will, we, once again, um, we were so happy to have him on. And uh, uh, we will close with, with our closing remarks now. We hope, um, we know that our um, Mosaje for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah taught us, he said the practice without thought is mind, thought without action. So it was no way that we were gonna come on here and articulate ideas and not show you examples of the execution of those ideas. So you saw that through the young people making a documentary last year, mini documentary called Get Out of Cuba. And it took eight minutes and 36 seconds to do that. Six seconds less than it took terrorist police in Minneapolis, Minnesota to snuff the life of George Floyd. We say, and of course, the decolonization process for Africans in the diaspora is to recognize the significance and magnitude of the landscape on the African continent. So you saw this young warrior talk to you about how young people, our children, are embracing the Nkrumah values, the, the root, the ideology of those values. And many who come to the continent, you come with a polluted, your mind polluted, your heart polluted, your soul polluted. And you may see this young brother and you may think he's supposed to clean your toilet. He's supposed to cook your food. He's supposed to 
serve you hand and foot in a domestic capacity, as opposed to recognizing that he carries the torch and legacy of the struggle to liberate and unify Mother Africa, snatching it from They have 57 brigades in 40 nations, and they are the face of the fight to eradicate the corona pandemic. And you look at that in the scheme in the context of the fact that in 2011, the World Health Organization confirmed that between 2011 and 2038, they were expecting 57 million deaths from non-communicable diseases, diseases that deal with respiratory complications and problems, which is the reason that many people are going to an early grave because of the corona pandemic. And we know that Cuba has 4,000 doctors on the African continent today. And we know that when we, they need material support because of the crippling blockade that compromises them, that at this point, which comes on the heels of a failed invasion of Cuba in 1961, the Bay of Pigs invasion. And after that, the Kennedy administration imposed this blockade and every president in the United States since then has extended it. And Joe Biden expended, extended it. So for those who thought that our last four years were worse than our first 396, we're here to tell you today that Joe Biden is no, not interested in being on the Mount Rushmore of gracious white liberal presidents. He doesn't want to be next to Kennedy. He doesn't want to be next to Johnson. He doesn't want to be next to Lincoln. He doesn't want to be next to Clinton. He doesn't want to be next to Obama. He walks in the footsteps of Harry Truman, who introduced the Zionist state of Israel and the CIA. He walks in the um, footsteps of Ross Barnett and Oral Farbus and George Wallace, Klansmen who were in the Democratic Party. So we are saying that based on the fact that while we are fighting for the Cuban medical personnel to come to the United States, we also must come to aid their efforts on the African continent. So we are calling on our organizations in the African diaspora to create a resource pool to assist the Cuban medical personnel on the African continent. As it relates to Ghana in May, a Ghanaian medical student studying at the Latin American School of Medical Sciences had a heart attack and transitioned to the ancestors in Ghana. And the National Union of Ghanaian Students attacked the Cuban government. So we are inclined to believe that the United States has reached out to the administration of Akufa Ado, and because of his capitulation to the United States, because of his subservience to the United States, they are trying to get him to shut off that program, but he knows better because he knows history. And when you look at Cuban solidarity on the African continent, it was none other than Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who was the first head of state to acknowledge the triumph of the Cuban revolution. And then when you look at Gamal Abdel Nasser doing it second, you look at Ahmed Ben Bella in Algeria rejecting John F. Kennedy's request to cancel his trip to Cuba. When Comandante Fidel Castro went to, um, came to the African continent the first time, he went to Guinea. And with Akme Sekou Toure and the Democratic Party of Guinea were in power. Guinea, who was responsible for us playing drums like we do all over the world. Guinea that is responsible for popularizing dance all over the world, which we do. And the only other man besides Jose Marti that led the fight for Cuba's revolution during the Spanish-American War, the only other man that Comandante Fidel Castro called an apostle was Akme Sekou Toure. Those who know the history of Samora Marshall and know that he was assassinated on October 19, 1986, you know that two Cuban doctors went down in that plane. Three years before that, Maurice in Grenada was assassinated by the Reagan administration for standing with Cuba. So we know that the ties between Cuba and Africa are unbreakable. And at a time where Cuba has 4,000 doctors, the United States came up with an initiative called the, probation, the, the Cuban Probation Project, trying to coerce Cuban doctors to escape from Cuba and come to the United States. And in 11 years, we were able to convince 7,117 to do it. And the objective of this was to prevent African youth who have been going to the Latin American School of Medical Sciences since 2000. Cuba is in Africa. You saw what they did with dealing with the Ebola pandemic five years ago in Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone. You know that Comandante Fidel Castro offered to send 4,000 HIV AIDS doctors and specialists from Cuba to Africa to remain in Africa until HIV AIDS was eradicated. 
when they are not in the hospitals or the streets or the villages treating our people, they specifically train the doc, the young people aspiring to be doctors who are not going to continue the brain drain and come to the London, come to Washington, go to Greece, go to Paris, go to New York, go to Amsterdam, go to Denmark. They will stay put in Ghana, stay put in Burkina Faso, stay put in Nigeria, stay put in Eritrea, stay put in Ethiopia, stay put in Zimbabwe. And as we say, as a, mem as a member of the Zimbabwe Cuba Friendship Association, between 1986 and 1996, Cuba trained 3,000 teachers in Zimbabwe. And that is the reason that Zimbabwe has a 97% literacy rate today. Six years ago, the Cuban government said that they want reparations for the damages of the blockade. So we are calling on Africans all over the diaspora to sign an appeal that we have calling for restitution, repair, and redemption because of the damages that that blockade has um, caused them. And giving our people an alternative to the United States Agency for International Development started the same year that the Peace Corps was set up, making it an extension of the CIA just like the Peace Corps an alternative to the Bush Foundation and how disgraced we are that in Ghana, George Bush has the largest highway named after him as he wants to make a departure on paper from his family's legacy of terrorism and white supremacy and wants to parade around Africa as a born again humanitarian. A departure from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We have the resources to put them behind the Cuban medical personnel on the African continent and make the strongest statement at a moment in history where there are 784 million people on earth living on a dollar 90 cents a day and 400 million of them live on the African continent. At a time where of the 53 nations that have least developed country status on this planet, meaning that you have submitted to the United Nations that you can't control your economic direction, seven of them are in Africa. At a time Obi, we lost you for a second. Um, independence. And, Cuba and got its independence in 1959. Too, sorry. Yes. One minute. And and we are we we've said all we want to say, and so we wanted to use this platform. We wanted to show the role of the youth in decolonization process, but we are calling Africans all over the world to action to call for the lifting of the blockade on Cuba, but specifically. We create a resource pool for Cuba's medical work on the African continent. And at a time where Africans are going to Ghana in particular, like gamblers go to Las Vegas and Atlantic City, we want Africans every time we touch foot in Ghana to have stethoscopes, to have syringes, to have anything that the Cuban medical personnel need in Ghana and all throughout the African continent. Defending the sovereignty of Cuba is inextricably linked to the struggle for one unified socialist Africa. We thank you. And we are looking forward to following up with the African Heritage Studies Association and others. And one last thing, in 1963, during the March on Washington, we know that Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois made his transition to the ancestors the night before. While that march was going on in Washington, Alice Wyndham and Julian Mayfield and Maya Angelou and Tom Feelings and Prest, um, Preston, Preston King, and James Alexander Lacey, they marched on the U.S. Embassy in Ghana. And amongst the demands was no more U.S. intervention in Vietnam and no more U.S. intervention in Cuba. So for those who are looking to gain a better understanding of the legacy of repatriates to Ghana, know that the Africans before you who laid the foundation for you to be there specifically protested on the U.S. Embassy demanding intervention in Cuba. It may be time to move in that direction again. We thank you. That's it for us. All right. Thank you so much.
do we we can take maybe one question uh unfortunately we're over time but um if there's one person who has a burning question we would uh open the floor for that here in the audience yeah we have audience. you want to have a question Oh, I'm I'm saying if we have a question, we can take one question from the audience and maybe one from online. We're about 15 minutes over, so um, we need to have a short question if you have one. Do we have one from the floor? We've got about 20 people here, 25 people here. Anybody? No? Anyone online? Uh, this is Mama Nabantu. I'd like to ask OB, is he, is he familiar with the Pan-African Fellows Movement that's working to bring into political existence the United African States? We're, we, we, keep our, we keep our ears and eyes to the ground of different efforts that um, people have. And these are the type of people that we're looking to because um, one of the things we recognize is everything has Pan-African character. But we want to make sure that we're talking about Pan-Africanism on a revolutionary track. When Don King and Muhammad Ali and George Foreman link up with Mobutu Seseko, who assassinated Patrice Lumumba with the CIA and poured acid on his body, that is a Pan-African linkage. That is not what we're talking about. When uh, the founder of UNITA, the CIA uh, mercenary, Jonas Savimbi, makes a connection with Mobutu to borrow his to fly back into Angola, that is a Pan-African linkage, but that's not what we're talking about. If heroin dealers in Nigeria connect with heroin dealers in Baltimore, that is a Pan-African linkage, but obviously that is a departure from the narrative that we are pushing. So we are saying that on a Pan-African scale right now, every and to show how Pan-Africanism from the bottom up can still influence Africa when neo-colonialist governments are dominant, not one African government voted against the block, voted for the blockade on Cuba at the United Nations on June 23rd. Only the United States and the Zionist state of Israel. And one thing about the Zionist state of Israel, for too long, Adolf Hitler has occupied a space all alone as the most vicious European white supremacist. Golda Meir and Menachem Begin and David Ben-Gurion and Yitzhak Shamir and Yitzhak Rabin belong right next to him. Israel voted in, Israel seeks to stifle progress wherever African people have it. When Tunisia got their independence, Israel stood up and refused to recognize their sovereignty at the UN. They did the same thing to Algeria. And Israel audaciously supported apartheid in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, and what's called South Africa, and Angola, and Mozambique, and Namibia. So on a, one of the things we're requesting is that it's time for Africa to unite and ask the African Union to strip Zionist Israel of their observer status of the African Union. They have not earned it, they do not deserve it. So regardless of the makeup of your organization, regardless of the makeup of your objectives, we're asking everyone to rally. To has human implications. I hope I answered the question. So for us, it, it's, it's, about, it's about what we do when we assemble in, on a Pan-African level. Are we doing things to advance our struggle or are we doing things to compromise our future? We have one final question from Brother Aran and then we'll close. Yes. Brother. All right. So so my, my question was, you know, in my presentation, I wanted to, if I had a time, to show the link between the increments policies towards African solidarity and the kind of role that uh, Cuba is playing right now. And uh, so I just want to give, uh, ask the question. Of course, go ahead. So that's the question you were asking? I am. Yes, that was his question. Okay, well, well, for example, they have 4,000 doctors 
dispersed throughout the African continent. In addition to treating them, they are training them. In Venezuela, which is 70% African, they have a project in conjunction with the Venezuelans called Operation Project Miracle, which the aim is to eradicate blindness all throughout the America, all throughout the Americas. Haiti has been in the news for the last month. Cuba has 500 doctors permanently stayed in Haiti and have trained over 2,000 doctors at the Latin American School of Sciences. When I was in Cuba for the Organization of Caribbean and Latin American Youth 21 years ago, a Haitian medical student said, everyone always asks us to compare the United States to Haiti um, and Cuba when it comes to Haiti. Cuba comes to Haiti to save our lives. The United States comes to take our lives. Um, Asada Shakur is safe in Cuba because of this type of solidarity. Nehanda Obiadun, before she transitioned, another freedom fighter, was safe in Cuba because of this. Um, Cuba uh, helped help the infrastructure of Grenada during the time of Maurice Bishop, helped with the infrastructure of Jamaica under the time of Maurice Bishop. And we know about their military solidarity, fighting with us in Angola for 14 years, fighting with us in Guinea-Bissau against Portuguese colonialism, willing to fight with us in the Congo after the assassination of Patrice Lumumba, but it was the Congolese, not the Cubans who didn't wanna fight. And as we said earlier, training 3000 teachers in, from Zimbabwe at the island of youth in Cuba within a 10 year period, which resulted in Zimbabwe having a 97% literacy rate. So when you take a look at their political solidarity, the humanitarian efforts, what it deserves is solidarity and reciprocity on our part. It is time for us to put some serious resources behind the Cuban medical personnel on the African continent. We thank you very much. And, and we're looking that, forward no. to sitting down with you uh, and people in Ghana so we can come up with a strategy. Thank you so much, Mama Afia. We hope what we brought to today was what you were expecting from us. Absolutely. Despite some of the technical problems, um, your message is loud and clear. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you and Brother Arin for joining us today. Long live the Cuban revolution. Thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us as well. We are now uh, entering our lunch break period and we'll be on break for about 30 minutes before our next session. Madasi, join us again in 30 minutes. Everybody here, thank you so much. <laughs>